Please welcome Dr. George Bauer. I would like to start with a little bit uh, of a story. Uh, and it says Eternal Forest in Bad Reichenhall. Bad Reichenhall is a town maybe 150 kilometers south of Munich. And it is pretty close uh, to my hometown Salzburg as well. Those stones that have gathered some moss you see there lying in a forest nearby there. And in the year 1616, a major economic crisis occurred in that town because that town had gained a lot of prosperity by mining salt out of the mountains around it. And in order to earn that salt, they had to boil water and cook it out of the stone. So for that purpose, they needed quite a lot of wood. However, 400 years ago, they didn't have the proper means of transportation to get the wood all the way from Finland down to Salzburg. But on the contrary, they did not have any Volvo trucks around and they had to carry it. So very soon they've been running into an ecological disaster because all the forest had been gone around Bad Reichenhall and their prosperity was in danger. So the Duke decided, who was responsible for that area, decided to um, issue a bill a document, the first document of its kind in that area, that the, uh, the sustainable resource that and this material wood, which was so crucial for the prosperity of the town, has to be protected. And uh, that bill was, called, was calling for an eternal forest that can last longer than the salt. I think that is very much the heart of the matter that we try to address today. And I would also like to say that Austrians are not known for their global thinking, but at least regionally we have got a pretty good understanding what helps us further. And for the winter sports industry, snow is a precious resource. And for us that is in danger. Uh, at Atomic and Salomon, we are very concerned about our markets going away. And I'm sure that the soft goods market, uh, like you have presented, of, has the same concern. However, there will be winter clothing, even if the average temperature in winter rises 10%. But let me get you closer into what Atomic and Salomon are doing for that purpose. At Atomic, we have carried out the aforementioned analysis. And that really came up with three major contributing factors which are weighted relatively evenly, one to each other. It's products, people, and energy. And let me start by products. We are manufacturing whatever you need to do a performance a winter sports day, whether that is on piste or off piste. And finally, almost equal to energy, it is the effect that our organization has. And uh, I know that that is a very complicated factor, and it is an international uh, crowd I am honored to speak to today, but we have to be very careful with, with flights, we have to be very careful with transportation, and also sourcing has to be mentioned in that regard. The action we have carried out is first of all to focus on energy. And in terms of energy, we have been able to replace an oil heating by a wood chips heating. This is an investment which paid back for Atomic very fast. Within three years roundabout, the Part of the investment we have been contributing to that wood chip heating, which now supplies all the community of Altenmarkt, uh, paid back fast not because of rising oil prices, but because even though wood chips have been quite high, so that, that's a single factor, you can change relatively fast. And the second factor I'd like to mention on that slide is wastewater recycling. That for us at Atomic has been a much more complicated process. We have undergone that change to recycle all the wastewater 100% that we use in our facility. And we did not expect the problems we finally had when we turned on the recycling, because so far we had relied on water running in a nearby river. And when we turned it on, uh, we used water, for example, to cool our presses or to grind during the grinding process of the ski. During those processes, the water becomes quite hot. So a lot of the mineral gets lost. All of a sudden, we were running our cooling cycles, our grinding cycles, with almost distilled water. Okay? And um, our process didn't work any longer. 
So when we turned it on, it gave us a very, some very troublesome days. Also, I should mention any, any substantial process change that you want to carry out, it really pays to learn from other industries and it really pays to have experts counsel you on that. Uh, it can be experienced companies in the field or, or, or private advisors, whatever. It pays to learn before you try to do something. Then the second topic I'd like to mention is waste. And first and foremost, of course, the target is avoiding waste. Let me mention that as any bigger industrial company, we try to optimize our processes. That's self-explaining. Also, it is natural that we try to standardize our material flow. We, we try to standardize the whole flow of information. However, that acts very much against our all common target, because the more flexibility you have, the faster you can adopt new materials, for example. All that creativity, for example, that we have seen beforehand might be very hard to adapt uh, to our processes. So the more flexible you stay in your processes in your company, the less dependent you are on rolling forecasts for material. A lot of the suppliers, again, sourcing far away from their supply of raw material. Um, if, for example, you have to ship polymer from Europe, manufactured in Europe or the US to southern China, that again gives you a pretty long rolling forecast. So it happens that maybe for two years ahead, you have to forecast which materials you will use. A much more emotional topic for atomic is to reduce the moving mass. Uh, I am an engineer, so allow me that technical term. It's really about, it, it's not so important whether you are moving people from one place to the other or goods from one place to the other. Each of us contributes a ton of carbon dioxide, uh, or several tons of carbon dioxide, only driving, you know? So that's again a lot more products than we, we manufacture during the same time especially international flights. If you're able to cut down on the number of international flights, that is tremendous. The effect is huge. And let me say that you'll be the best friends of your controlling department and that they can supply you with the proper tools to do that. Yeah. If you want to have an impact, you do need to do things for real, okay? Not just, yeah, I set an improvement target and that is like eight years away. Hello, that can't be it. Another material and another process I would like to highlight is... Um, a process developed by DuPont, a company which has that a long time already on its agenda. Uh, and let me tell you that in order to use renewable materials, to use things that grow on fields, that, to use nature for our uh, purposes, we maybe have to use processes that are not accepted as very green today. Seriously, uh, this process, for example, makes use of a genetically modified uh, bacterium, and it also works best with a genetified modi uh, genetically modified corn. Let me end my presentation by telling you and asking all of you a question. We, of course, try to communicate that better to our customer. And I can tell you that today, retail is interested only partly in the whole story. But a lot of our customers care, especially the customers who dare to get in direct contact with nature, especially like we have heard beforehand, mountaineering. People who, who do serious um, winter sports off piste they are very dependent on understanding nature. They are very dependent on, on, on knowing the snow temperature, the elevation that they are on. They are really concerned about wind and everything that they experience very directly themselves. Uh, we are really facing the challenge, how can we change our, our racing-driven image and how can we make that more, how can we raise awareness of our end uh, consumers that ecological is not something that goes against speed. You know, Atomic is loaded a lot with uh, speed and that, coming maybe from the car industry or wherever, is not necessarily a, yeah, a, an approach that drives you away from very simple thinking, and we are not burning any, any fuel uh, driving down the mountain faster or slower. So you can still enjoy speed, but uh, it's important to care about uh, the processes and materials that led you uh, to enjoy that. So I'd like to conclude by showing you our manufacturing site. We are based in a narrow Alpine Valley. Um, a lot of the family names resemble each other, so the people know each other very well. We feel the um, most immediate impacts of a lack of snow very directly and that drives us to be serious on that topic. And I think uh, we all will enjoy to have uh, sites uh, the one or the other day ourselves like that. Um, I'd like 
to say thank you for the attention. Maybe some of you have the chance to view things like that tomorrow and skip ISPO. Uh, I don't mean to hurt the organizers, but thank you very much. Thank you very thank you. much, Diego.